Run. The Xenomorphs are back, and this Friday, the legendary Alien franchise takes us on another terrifying journey with the release of Alien Romulus. As we gear up for what promises to be another spine-chilling edition, it's the perfect time to look back at the films that have shaped this iconic sci-fi horror series. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Nico Liro. Today we're diving deep into the world of chest-bursting horror and intergalactic terror with a ranking of every single movie from the Alien franchise. From Ridley Scott's groundbreaking original to the latest entries that have kept us on the edge of our seats or in some cases left us scratching our heads. This series has been nothing short of a wild ride. Now let's be honest, the Alien franchise has had its ups and downs. Some movies are cinematic masterpieces that have redefined the genre while others well, let's just say that they've divided fans, but that's what makes this ranking so exciting. I'll be taking a close look at each film from the highs to the lows and giving you my take on where they stand. So stick around until the end to see how your favourite and maybe least favourite Alien movies stack up. And hey, if you're as passionate about movies as I am and as passionate about the Alien franchise as I am, or just love geeking out over some sci-fi horror, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You'll be the first to know when we dive into more rankings, reviews, and everything in between. Trust me, you won't want to miss out. All right, let's jump in and face the Xenomorphs head on. Let's kick things off with the movie that started it all, Ridley Scott's 1979 masterpiece, Alien. Released over four decades ago, this film not only redefined sci-fi horror, but also left an indelible mark on cinema as a whole. Directed by the visionary Ridley Scott and starring Sigourney Weaver, Tom Skerritt, John Hurt and an unforgettable supporting cast, Alien brought a new level of intensity to the screen. Weaver's portrayal of Ellen Ripley became iconic, establishing her as one of the most formidable heroines in film history. Alien wasn't just another sci-fi flick, it was a groundbreaking piece of cinema. Scott masterfully blended elements of horror and science fiction, creating a claustrophobic atmosphere that kept audiences on the edge of their seats. The film's slow burn, combined with its shocking moments like the infamous chestburster scene, left audiences both terrified and mesmerized. The film's practical effects designed by the legendary H.R. Geiger brought the xenomorph to life in a way that CGI could never replicate. Geiger's biomechanical design, paired with Scott's meticulous direction, created a creature that was as terrifying as it was fascinating. And let's not forget Jerry Goldsmith's haunting score, which perfectly underscored the film's eerie and suspenseful tone. Alien was more than just a movie, it was an experience. It challenged the conventions of both sci-fi and horror and set a new standard for what the genre could achieve. Even today, over 40 years later, Alien remains a masterclass in tension, atmosphere and sheer cinematic brilliance. It's going to come as no surprise to any of you that we're starting strong. Alien goes straight in with the S ranking. No wonder that Alien not only spawned an entire franchise, but also continues to influence filmmakers and thrill audiences to this day. Next up is the explosive sequel that took the franchise in a bold new direction. James Cameron's 1986 blockbuster Aliens. While the original Alien terrified us with its slow burn horror, Aliens amped up the adrenaline delivering a pulse pounding action horror that's every bit as iconic. Directed by the legendary James Cameron and with Sigourney Weaver reprising her role as the indomitable Ellen Ripley, Aliens also introduced us to a stellar class including Michael Bean as Corporal Hicks, Bill Paxton as the unforgettable Hudson and Lance Henriksen as the synthetic Bishop. This time Ripley isn't just surviving, she's leading the charge. Aliens shifted the tone from the claustrophobic horror of the first film to an all-out action horror spectacle. But make no mistake, 
Cameron didn't sacrifice an ounce of tension or fear. The xenomorphs are more terrifying than ever, especially when you realize there's an entire hive of them led by the monstrous alien queen. Cameron's approach was a masterstroke. More marines, more guns, and a whole lot more xenomorphs. Yet the film still captures the essence of what made the original so terrifying. The sense of isolation, the unstoppable enemy, and Ripley's relentless fight for survival. But here's the big question to you all. Which is better, Alien or Aliens? Let me know down in the comments. Aliens was a technical marvel, pushing the limits of practical effects and miniatures. The Queen Alien, a combination of animatronics and puppetry, was a staggering feat of design and execution. Cameron's knack for creating high-octane, immersive action sequences is on full display here, making Aliens a tour de force of both horror and action filmmaking. Aliens didn't just live up to the original, it expanded on the universe deepened the lore and solidified Ellen Ripley as a cinematic icon. It's a sequel that not only stands the test of time, but stands tall with many fans even considering it superior to the first. But I want to hear from you as I've already said, which side are you on, Alien or Aliens? And while you're thinking about that, this movie, again unsurprisingly, joins its predecessor in the S ranking slot. So whether you're in it for the horror or for the action, Aliens is a masterclass on how to do a sequel right. Now let's dive into the third chapter of the Alien saga, Alien 3, directed by the visionary David Fincher. Released in 1992, this film took the franchise in yet another bold and arguably controversial direction. With Sigourney Weaver returning as Ellen Ripley, we find ourselves on the bleak, windswept prison planet of Fiorina 161, where there are no guns and survival is once again anything but guaranteed. Alien 3 brought a stark contrast to the high-octane action of Aliens. This time, it's back to basics. Ripley is alone, weaponless and facing a new breed of xenomorph in a place where even hope seems extinct. Joining her are a group of hardened prisoners played by an ensemble cast including Charles Dance and Paul McGann. But after the sheer intensity of Aliens, many fans were left disappointed with the direction Alien 3 took. The tone was somber, the pacing slower, and the absence of the colonial marines meant no big battles. Just Ripley, the prisoners, and an alien with no way to defend themselves. And yes, some detractors have even reduced the film to being just about closing doors to stop the alien. But that's selling this movie far too short. David Fincher, despite all the production challenges, was aiming for something almost Shakespearean in its tragic scope. Alien 3 is a meditation on loss, sacrifice, and the inevitability of fate. It strips everything down to its rawest form, forcing Ripley to confront not just the alien, but her own mortality. It's a film that's more introspective and character-driven, pushing the boundaries of what a sci-fi horror film could be. Finch's atmospheric direction combined with the stark industrial design of Fiorina 161 creates a sense of relentless dread, and while it might not have the same widespread acclaim as its predecessors, Alien 3 is a bold artistic vision that, when appreciated for what it's trying to achieve, stands as a unique and powerful entry in the franchise. So while Alien 3 might not have been the sequel some fans wanted, it's far from just closing doors as so many people have said. It's dark, introspective journey that challenges both Ripley and the audience in new and profound ways. And for that reason, I'm actually, this may surprise a lot of you, I rank Alien 3 really highly. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the A ranking spot. And I'd encourage you all, give it another watch you might find it much more than you remember. Fincher delivered a film that's brutal, uncompromising, and in its own way, brilliant. Now we arrive at the fourth entry in the franchise, Alien Resurrection, released in 1997 and directed by Jean-Pierre Jeunet. 
After the sombre tone of Alien 3, this film made a clear attempt to return to the more action-heavy style that fans loved in Aliens, but with a twist. A twist that divided audiences and critics alike. Alien Resurrection brings back Sigourney Weaver as Ellen Ripley, but with a catch. And there's a spoiler warning here to go with this. But the film's 97, I think you would have seen it by now if you had an interest. But here it is, she's a clone. A hybrid of human and xenomorph DNA, which gives her enhanced abilities and a much darker edge. Alongside her is a diverse cast, including the likes of Winona Ryder as the enigmatic Cell, Ron Perlman and Michael Wincott, leading a ragtag crew of mercenaries. The film tries to recapture the adrenaline-pumping action of Aliens, with intense shootouts, narrow escapes, and a unique setting on a military spaceship filled with scientists playing God. However, despite its return to action, Alien Resurrection received mixed reviews. Fans were divided, some appreciated the fresh take, while others felt the movie strayed too far from what made the original films great. One of the film's most controversial choices was making Ripley a clone, with her character now almost a villain, cold, detached and grappling with her new identity. While this decision added an interesting, if unsettling, layer to the story, many fans struggled to connect with this new version of Ripley. Yet despite its flaws, Alien Resurrection also brought us some truly unique moments, like the eerie, tension-filled sequence of aliens swimming underwater, showcasing these creatures in an environment we'd never seen before. Jean-Pierre Jeunet's direction gave the film a distinct visual style, quirky, darkly humorous, and at times even grotesque. And while it doesn't quite reach the heights of the first two films, Alien Resurrection remains a fascinating, if uneven, entry in the series, offering a fresh yet controversial take on the Xenomorph mythos. Alien Resurrection might not be everyone's favourite, I'm well aware of that, but it's a wild ride that's packed with memorable moments, both good and bad. If you haven't seen it in a while, it's worth revisiting, if only to witness the Xenomorphs like never before. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put Alien Resurrection. It's floating between a B and a C for me. I I'm feeling in a good mood. Alien Resurrection gets a B. Love it or hate it, Alien Resurrection proves that the Alien franchise is at least never afraid to take risks, even if they don't always pay off. Next up, we have a crossover that fans had been waiting for for years. Aliens vs Predator, directed by Paul W.S. Anderson and released in 2004. Set against the unique backdrop of a polar ice cap, this film pits two of the most iconic extraterrestrial species in cinema history against each other in an all-out battle for survival. In this film, I'm not even going to pretend to cite off the actors here, other than Lance Henriksen returning as Charles Bishop Wayland, Charles Bishop Wayland. I, I don't know any of the actors in this film off the top of my head. Was Ewan Bremer in this film? I think he was. They lead a team of archaeologists and mercenaries who stumble upon an ancient pyramid buried deep beneath the Antarctic ice, a setting that adds an eerie, claustrophobic atmosphere to the showdown, so the claustrophobia thing is creeping its way back in. That was a good point. Now, some might scoff at the idea of putting predators against xenomorphs, but actually, it makes a lot of sense. The predators are a warrior race constantly seeking out the ultimate prey. And what better challenge than the lethal, perfect organism that are the xenomorphs? This premise taps into the lore established in both franchises and creates a logical, if somewhat fanservice-y mashup. But let's be real, Alien vs Predator is a massive step down in quality from the original films. The script is thin, the characters are even more thin, and the film often feels like it's toying with B-movie territory. However, if you go in with the right mindset, thinking of it as a popcorn summer blockbuster rather than a seminal piece of filmmaking, eh, there's still a lot of fun to be had. Paul W.S. Anderson brings his knack for crafting visually engaging, fast-paced action to the table. The movie knows what it is and it doesn't try to be more an entertaining creature feature showdown that delivers on the promise of seeing these two legendary species duke it out. The polar setting adds a fresh twist, giving the film a distinctive look that sets it apart from the previous entries. This 
Alien vs Predator might not be a high point in the franchise, but it's definitely a guilty pleasure. I'm not trying, it's not trying to be deep or profound. It's just good, old fashioned, dumb fun. So grab some popcorn, sit back and enjoy the spectacle of two of the galaxy's deadliest creatures going head to head. If you're in for a creature feature, you'll be in for this movie. Does it ever reach the highs that the franchise is deserving of? No. And so for that reason, I'm giving Alien vs Predator a C, but a generous C. It still has some fun to it. And remember, not every film has to be a masterpiece. Sometimes it's okay to just enjoy the ride. Next, we delve into what many consider the lowest point of the Alien franchise, Alien vs Predator Requiem, released in 2007 and directed by the Brothers Strauss. With a generic suburban setting, this sequel attempts to continue the crossover madness, but ultimately it feels more like a desperate cash grab rather than a genuine effort to expand the series. Requiem picks up right where the Alien vs Predator left off, but sadly it drops the ball in almost every way imaginable. The cast includes people who I don't really know, I think Stephen Pasquale is in this off the top of my head, but yeah, even this group of somewhat talented actors, they, they, they can't save the script man, it's, it's as thin as it is predictable, and it's that setting that, what, what were we thinking here? Instead of the unique polar landscape of the first AVP or any of the other previous Alien movies, we're stuck in a bland suburban town that could literally be anywhere, stripping away any sense of atmosphere or intrigue. Let's be honest, Alien vs Predator wasn't exactly a masterpiece, but at least it was fun. Requiem on the other hand offers almost nothing. The action is generic, the characters are forgettable, and the plot? Can anyone actually remember what the plot of this movie is? Seriously, I'm challenging you now. Leave a comment if you can tell me what happens without looking it up. The problems with Requiem are numerous. The setting is uninspired, the action is wooden, and the characters... Ah, you won't care about a single one of them. Even the action which should be the saving grace of a movie like this is predictable and lacks any real tension or excitement. It's a film that exists solely to capitalize on the modest success of its predecessor without adding anything of value to the franchise. Directed by the brothers Strauss who made their feature debut here, the film suffers from poor lighting, muddled direction and an overall lack of vision. It's clear that this was more about making a quick buck than crafting something memorable. Requiem is not just a low point in the Alien series, it's a film that struggles to even justify its own existence. Alien vs Predator Requiem is a forgettable mess. It fails on almost every level. It's a reminder that not every franchise mashup deserves a sequel and sometimes it's best to leave well just leave it alone but hey if you're looking for something to watch when there's absolutely nothing else on yeah well even then you might want to think twice about this alien vs predator requiem is a d-ranking it's as bad as it gets for the franchise so i want to put it to you actually what do you think can anyone out there honestly tell me that they remember this movie Let's see if it has left a lasting impression on any of you. It, like, yeah, leave your comments below if you think I've been too harsh, but yeah, I'd be surprised. Now we arrive at a film that for many came as a surprise when they realized it was part of the Alien franchise. Prometheus, directed by the legendary Ridley Scott and released in 2012 with a stellar cast including Numi Rapace, Michael Fassbender, Charlize Theron and Idris Elba, this movie promised to delve into the origins of one of sci-fi's most terrifying creatures, but it left audiences with more questions than answers. Prometheus is nothing short of a visual masterpiece. The effects and cinematography are spectacular in this film. It's a real feast for the eyes. From the vast, otherworldly landscapes to the in intricately designed spacecraft, every 
frame is dripping with detail and oozing class. Ridley Scott knows how to build a world, and here he crafts one that's as beautiful as it is haunting. But as stunning as Prometheus is, the plot is, well, let's just say it's a bit of a mess. The story is filled with big ideas, questions about the origins of humanity, the existence of gods, and the creation of the xenomorphs, but it's all tangled up in a web of confusion. The film tries to be profound and mysterious, but often ends up being more frustrating than enlightening. The characters make some seriously questionable decisions, which only adds to the confusion. That said, the ensemble cast delivers strong performances across the board, Michael Fassbender stands out as the enigmatic android David, and Numi Rapace gives a compelling turn as Dr. Elizabeth Shaw. There's also something undeniably fascinating about the film's exploration of the Xenomorph's origins, though by the end you might feel slightly shortchanged if you were expecting a full-blown alien movie. When Prometheus first hit theatres, many fans were left puzzled. The connection to the Alien franchise wasn't immediately clear, and while the film eventually ties back to the Xenomorphs, it does so in a way that feels almost like an afterthought. This left some fans annoyed, especially since the marketing had teased a much closer link to the iconic creature we all know and fear. Prometheus is a film of highs and lows, visually stunning but narratively flawed. It's a bold attempt to expand the universe Ridley Scott introduced us to back in 1979, but it's also a movie that can leave you seriously scratching your head. And yeah, for that reason, ugh, I wanted to be more generous, but I think my generosity, my generosity quota for this evening has vanished. Yeah, I'm going to give Prometheus a C ranking. It, it's still worth watching for the incredible visuals and the intriguing, if convoluted, ideas that it brings to the table, and be prepared for some serious character blunders along the way. And next up we have Alien Covenant, released in 2017 and once again directed by Ridley Scott. This film promised to deliver what Prometheus didn't, more xenomorphs. And in that sense, it succeeded! Starring Catherine Waterston, Michael Fassbender, Billy Craddock, and Danny McBride, Covenant aimed to bring the horror back to the franchise. But unfortunately, it also dug itself deeper into the rabbit hole of a convoluted plot that left many fans scratching their heads even more than they had been during Prometheus. Alien Covenant picks up where Prometheus left off, but this time, the xenomorphs are front and center something fans were clamouring for after feeling shorthanded by the previous film. However, while the film does deliver on the creature feature front, that story man, it just spirals further into confusion and philosophical musings that just don't hit the mark. The plot centres on the crew of the colony ship Covenant who stumble upon what they think is an uncharted paradise only to find it's a breeding ground for the terrifying xenomorphs we all know and fear. But the real twist comes from Michael Fassbender's dual roles as the androids David and Walter. The story takes a bizarre turn as David, our returning synthetic from Prometheus, continues his experiments in creating the perfect organism. And then there's that scene. Basically, David kissing David. Yes, you've heard that right, and if you've seen it, you know what I mean. In a moment the left audience is more puzzled than anything, we watch as David teaches his newer counterpart Walter how to play the flute, culminating in a strange, almost romantic encounter between the two androids. It's a scene that's emblematic of the film's deeper issues, a focus on convoluted philosophical ideas at the expense of coherent storytelling. Ridley Scott's direction is as sharp as ever to some extent, and the cast does a commendable job with what they're given, but not even more appearances from the Xenomorphs could save this film from its tangled plot and odd narrative choices. The horror elements are there, but they're overshadowed by a story that's trying too hard to be profound and ends up just feeling disjointed. Alien Covenant had all the ingredients for a return to form, but instead it left many fans feeling unsatisfied. It's a film that gives us more creatures we love, but burdens them with storylines that, that, that are more confusing than compelling. If you're in it for the Xenomorphs, 
you'll get your fix. But don't expect the plot to make much sense, and for that very reason, I can't score Alien Covenant more than a C. So, yeah, and do you think I've been a bit harsh on that? Actually, where do you rank Covenant in Prometheus? Do you think Covenant is better than Prometheus, or the other way around? Let me know in the comments section below. So there you have it! Eight films spanning nearly four decades, each with its own unique take on the terrifying universe of Alien, from the groundbreaking horror of the original to the action-packed intensity of Aliens, and the more recent, albeit mixed offerings like Prometheus and Alien Covenant. This franchise has had its ups and downs. While the most recent installment might have been a letdown for some, there's a lot to be excited about with Alien Romulus, which promises a return to the roots that made this series so iconic. And with horror master Fede Alvarez at the helm, it's shaping up to be a thrilling ride. But what about you guys? Are you excited for Alien Romulus the way I am? It's my most anticipated movie of the year, just putting that one out there. Do you agree with my ranking of the franchise, or do you have a different take on which films stand out, or indeed which films are maybe worse than what I've, what I've, what I've listed here? Let me know in the comment section below, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and don't forget to please like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and remember to tickle that notification bell so you know whenever a new piece of content is going up, and please do share this bit of content with fellow Alien fans. I've got more Alien content coming for you this week, including my full review of Alien Romulus this Friday. So stay tuned right here to the Silver Screen Dudes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with more from the world of aliens.